you're going to jump in, as I talk, or I'll reach a point and you can say what you feel, right? You can start. Go ahead. All right, now why don't you just kind of tell me about your memories of being back here, what it's like. After 48 years, um, this is the first time we've returned to the scene of the crime, and a lot of things have changed. Um, however, a lot of things haven't changed. Jack, do you have something? I've, I kind of feel as I've seen it now, since it's almost 50 years. It really brings back some pretty strong feelings and memories. We knew that track was there. We knew it for 10, 15, 20 years, but it was never, ever used. My family and I decided to take a trip from Pennsylvania down to the Cape May area of New Jersey. Basically, it was myself, my wife Betty, in the middle was my three-year-old son, Jack. In the back was my 70-year-old mother and my four-month-old daughter, Beth, who was in a uh, baby's bassinet. I was attending a college night school program in architecture. I felt that I could sit and that I could study and that my wife, Betty, could drive the car. The radio may have been on, but it never would have been blaring because that's not what we did. No, there wasn't music playing because Jack was studying and he couldn't be listening to the music and studying at the same time. I have, I have the impression that there was music playing. So we were going through the deer woods and all of a sudden I hear, woo, woo, woo. And I'm thinking, what the hell is that? And I kind of looked over at my wife and I said, did you hear that? What the hell is that? And she was like kind of oblivious to this. You're moving along at maybe 55, 60 miles an hour. No, I, because I don't like going that fast. I was driving 25 to 30 miles an hour. Betty does drive 25 to 30 miles an hour now. And that's, th that's what obviously she is recalling. But in the younger years, there's no way in hell she was driving 25, 30 miles an hour. So we're driving through the deer woods and I've heard this like two times, three times and it's getting like, it seems like it's getting a little louder. <laughs> It was just like blowing this loud horn. It was, it was nonstop. Nobody ever saw a train there. There's no crossbars that comes down. There's no alarms that goes off. It's just this peaceful little crossing that looks like it's abandoned. But as we got closer, I heard the horn again and again, and that hard. Oh my God, Betty, it's a train. Stop the car, put your brake on, stop. Somebody said train, I don't know who. When Betty did put on her brakes, she stopped short of the railroad crossing. When Betty stopped abruptly, the bassinet was thrown forward in between the front and the back seat, and Betty saw, realized that was going on, so she turned around to look in the back. And when she did that, she took her foot off the brakes, and that allowed the car to, to kind of drift, and it just actually went up this incline onto the tracks. I could see the train coming rapidly towards us. I just instantly kind of threw myself across the front, and I tried to grab the transmission lever with the thought that I could throw it in the reverse and maybe get the car off the tracks. That didn't happen. It was horrible. It was like death coming in. That's how it felt. It's like, it's over, it's death. I mean, I had a freight train coming right in. It was like face to face. And it hit, and it was boom.
they lifted us up like a merry-go-round. Here, they hit the pole. See, it spun around like this. And it landed right here. All right, I'm, I have a different version, but I also was kind of out of it, so. The pole's so damn close that Aurora, you couldn't have spun too many times. No, I only so, spun once. You only spun once? Right, it felt like a merry-go-round. And that's when I think you hit your head. I got thrown into the windshield. My forehead crashed into the windshield. After Jack went through the windshield, he was pretty shaken up. In fact, he, his whole body was vibrating. Uh, the ambulance was coming, but hadn't gotten there. I didn't think that he was going to make it. I thought that his wound was very serious and that he might die that night. Miraculously, the engine didn't burst up in flames. Miraculously, Betty never got injured. Jack never got injured. Beth got protected. My mother got injured because she got thrown. I looked like somebody had beaten the hell out of me. I looked like I was in a prize fight and I lost badly. After this occurred, I don't think I was really quite myself. What if I hit that transmission lever incorrectly and it went forward? We wouldn't be here today. Do you think it brings you closer together going through something like that? Not really. <laughs> no. I mean, I can, I can start to... Uh, uh, I mean, do you? I don't, I don't sense that. No, I don't either. No. Okay, so it didn't bring you closer together, but... No, actually, we're apart. I know, but... <laughs> you, you almost pushed me in that puddle. Well, can we try it again? No. It's incredible to realize that this is 50 years ago. We got seven kids with eight grandchildren. Well, we should have all been dead, crushed over, but we're here. Even today, whenever I'm driving across train tracks, I still find myself doing this quick little glance to the left and this little quick glance to the right to see, are there any trains out there? And I don't think that's ever going away. Guess what? People do get hit by fucking trains. <laughs>